Hey, it's Ias Caraval from ZK Research here. And Bob La Liberté from the Cube Research. And so welcome to the Zcast and the Analyst Angle. Yeah, so we're both here at HPE Discover 2025 in Vegas. Uh, Bob, uh, this takes us to the end, I guess, of the spring analyst season. It certainly does. It's been, it seems like a long road. Yeah. <laughs> Glad to be here, but great way to, great way to cap things off. Yeah, and even though uh, this is Discover, which we think of traditionally as a compute show. Correct. There was an awful lot of networking. In fact, uh, uh, one of the things that Antonio Neri said last year, when the Juniper, after the Juniper deal was announced, was that HPE would become a networking first company. Yes. And uh, it certainly seems that way. In fact, during his keynote, he had three pillars, AI, hybrid cloud, and networking. So Correct. he carried equal weight to hybrid cloud. And thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I thought that was great. And, and the, the key words for me when he talked about those three pillars, he started with networking is foundational. Yes. And I think in today's modern and highly distributed environments, that's really key. We've seen it in the research we've done. Yep. The importance of the network is certainly growing. It's becoming far more important for organizations. And it, the other piece of it, I think, is that it's not just about connectivity, but it's about the secure connectivity as well. And we've seen that throughout the spring season, that greater convergence of networking and security to ensure that regardless of who's connecting and from where, they're able to do so securely. Yeah, in fact, I was just talking with one of their customers in Ova Healthcare, and he said his vision is to turn the network into a 160,000 port firewall, uh, part of the reason being in healthcare. Uh, and in fact, he joked, he said, I see you tour those stadiums and things. Yeah. He goes, those guys have it easy. <laughs> he goes, I'm dealing with like a, a lot of metal interference, and he goes, I've got 30,000 IoT devices, none of which can be managed with traditional endpoints. And yeah. so for him, uh, the network almost has, has to become that security enforcement point, right? Right, and it's got yeah. to be able to identify all those endpoints yeah. as well so they can apply the appropriate policy, yeah. security policies through them as well. Yeah, in fact, um, I thought it was interesting that um, in the we were both in the networking breakout session yeah. and uh, how much security focus there was in there. They talked about Zero Trust and SSE and you know, uh, a lot of the stuff with ClearPass, right? So Correct. Yeah. Yeah, the multi-vendor yeah. got a lot of cheers from the airheads, yes. which as we, we, we discussed. Airheads live on. Airheads live on, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's a big thing. Uh, John Green at the end came out with his green yeah. sequence. You know, that was a throwback to, to atmosphere. Yeah, it certainly was. There was a little bit, uh, and he actually came out and he, he said, I'm here at, oh, I almost said atmosphere. Yeah. And he got a big, yeah. <laughs> big uh, applause from the crowd. So. So there's definitely that culture you can see exist through some of those some of those organizations, but yeah, there was a lot of innovation from the networking team this year at Discover as well. So to back up, not only is it foundational, but they're clearly putting effort into it to try and improve the technology. And obviously, the big news was the Agentic AI mesh yeah. that they're they're going to be coming out with as well. Yeah, what do you think of that? Did you like the demo? Yeah, I mean, I thought the demo was great. I mean, they, they did a really nice job of feeding the airheads in small increments. So every demo they did was basically five minutes. Five minutes to set up private 5G, yeah. right? Five minutes to go ahead and, and um, you know, fix a problem and things like that. So really bite-sized, consumable demos that a lot of, at the end, you were getting the applause from the from the audience as well. So clearly excited about the, the new technologies they're bringing to the market. Yeah. Yeah, and um, they've done a, I think one of the areas they've excelled in is they're not always first to market with products, but when they, uh, when they say they're going to deliver something, they tend to hit those timelines. Yeah. And um, it, it's, HP as a company is interesting because if you look at it, you know, margins aren't great, uh, stock price hasn't moved a lot, but the customers here love them. Correct. Right? And yeah. that customer loyalty, uh, I think has a lot to do with the fact that the way they build product is they yep. they promise things, they deliver them. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, like I said, the they, they recognize that they're not the largest networking vendor, and so part of their announcements this week was to add in that you know they were talking about the ops ramp, multi vendor yeah. capabilities, and so forth, tying that into the agentic AI component as well. So the agents being able to go out and query ops ramp and things of that nature. So while maybe not being able to potentially manage those devices, at least being able to see them, be aware of them, is going to be a huge plus so for those we, complex So we challenged devices. them on that in the analyst Q&A, and I thought that was, yeah. they gave an interesting response where, because um, what, they've, what they've built is actually a level of observability, so right. you can see into Cisco networks and other competitive networks, yeah. but they said when you look at the, the time taken to manage a network, 90% of the time is 
in the observability, the root cause identification of problems, things like yep. that. And really it's only the last 10% of the config. So yep. if they can do the hard stuff and just push the config out to the engineers to do, that really solves a big chunk of the problem. Yeah, yeah, it certainly does. And I think we're going to see a lot more of the agentic AI. We're going to see a lot more tied to automation. I think the key is, and they're, they're doing it as well, is the human in the loop. They didn't really discuss that much, yeah. but when you went through the demos, you could see it was all about the interaction, humans having a place in that role, being able to execute what the recommendations are. And I think that's going to be so key, as we've, we've talked about the, that time to comfort with this technology, right? This is an adjustment that all these operators are going to have to have. They're, as each day passes, there's more and more greater realization that AI is going to be a part of their future and doing network operations. And so, you know, this is, this is another one of those opportunities for the Aruba side, HPE Aruba networking folks, to really step up and embrace the technology, start learning it, and becoming comfortable with it so they can provide benefit. Yeah, and then uh, on the AI uh, hybrid cloud side, it does seem like they've done a, it's, they haven't called it out as explicitly as some of the other vendors, but you can see the coming together of the networking portion of that hybrid cloud stack, right? Yeah, and I think that it's an interesting piece for, for HPE and its current networking incarnation, Yeah. right? Where they're obviously relying a lot on NVIDIA for the back-end networking components, whether it be Ethernet or, or InfiniBand and so forth. I mean, who but, isn't, right? Right, who is. <laughs> but they do have, they do have that front-end network, right, that's yeah. really going to integrate. They talked a little bit about more about inferencing and the capabilities, right, getting all the data to and from those organizations. So, and I think they're, they are still heavily focused on, with their AI factories, providing those turnkey, which as we know, is one of the most important things, having those validated design, those blueprints, to help people accelerate the deployment of these technologies, so. Yeah. But, but I think that's a good proof point for the larger HPE story. Right? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the other takeaways was obviously they, they highlighted their supercomputing yeah. right, aspect. And, and they were, it was interesting, because they were talking about AI factories and including the supercomputers in them and the fact that they've got the top three supercomputers yeah. in the world, right, obviously with the Cray uh, acquisition they had done yeah. and so forth. So. And they don't provide the network in those environments, which is interesting too, so. I Actually, that's an area I'd like to see them put more effort in is on the data center networking yes. side, because they've got a handful of top racks, which is, but you, you don't think of them as a data, uh, a networking for AI player, right? Correct, exactly, yeah. yeah. Not Certainly not on the back end network. Yes. They could potentially be on the front end yeah. and over the WAN, right, with all the, the technologies they have, but as far as that data center networking, and I think that's one of the reasons why, right, they're, they're trying to, and Antonio brought up that he's, yeah. his in his mindset, they're still going through with the Juniper acquisition that's going to happen, and that'll yeah. be a part of the story for next year. So, as I mentioned, we're through analyst season, right? Yes. We've again been inundated with uh, agentic AI and things like that. Where are we in that process, you think? Yeah, it's, it's still <laughs> really early days yeah. for agentic AI. I mean, a lot of these were announcements, that will be coming out sometime later this year. Well, we year. saw some demos, but I'm not fully convinced they're all live, so. Co correct, yeah. yes. There were, Especially there when were... you get multiple live demos and they're exactly the same, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's, uh, like yeah. I said, that, that's why to me, I, I consider these announcements at this yeah. point. And I think what's really going to be, like I said, is we get, it's great. We went through the spring season. All the announcement is there. The hype is there. The excitement is there. but come this fall, it's when the rubber hits the road, right? And that's when we've got to go out and do our job and talk to clients who are using yeah. it to make sure it actually works and works as advertised. It'll be interesting to see how it changes the vendor landscape, though our research showed that yeah. something like 93% or something? 97. 97% of companies yeah. said they changed vendors if they had demonstrable AI, keep, their better. AI was demonstrably better, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it really opens up a, kind of this AI race for the networking yeah. side to be able to demonstrate that they've got the capabilities. Clearly for some that already have it, they've got an advantage, they've got customers they can tout yeah. and so forth, but I, I would expect that come this fall, we're going to be hearing a lot more about how these technologies are being used um, in, in Well, if it's an AI race, then it comes down to data, and then if you look at handicapping the vendors, Cisco's got Splunk, but HPE's got OpsRamp. OpsRamp now. Right? Or OpsRamp, yeah. And, uh, They've also got central, and yep. so I mean that it's going to come down to who's got who's got the data, but then also um, you know correct. You yeah. got to have the data, I guess. And it's did, a little bit like that episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, where Larry created the Spite Store, and 
Mocha Joe said you got to have the beans. You got to have the right? beans. You got you to have the data. Yeah, and, and I think David addressed that. Uh, yeah. I don't remember the exact stats, but something like trillions of data points from yeah. millions of devices and so forth. And you know, Cisco's touting the fact that they've got a lot of their data from all the years that they've right, yeah. they've been in business in there. But yeah, that's that's going to be the key is making sure that you've got the the data and others who've been doing this for for you know up yeah. to a decade now and so forth. So. So, but yeah, that, that data is going to be absolutely critical yeah. to, to forming now, that foundation. Now, let's wrap up with the J word, right? Uh, yeah. We, we didn't, we, I wasn't sure if Juniper would pop up at all here, and it did. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, from what we were told, yeah. they're working as if the, ac the acquisition is going to close, but they also understand it's really out of their control. So, right. uh, I'm not sure we have really have anything to add to to that other than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's been so many articles and, and, and things yeah. published, there's not really much more to add other than their their plan is still to acquire them. There's obviously some things that have to go through legally that will be happening this summer. So it's kind of a stay tuned and, and see what happens and then we'll move forward from there. The DOJ's POV on this is idiotic, if, if I may say so. There, There is no, they're, they're picking at North American Wi-Fi as upsetting the competitive balance is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's certainly interesting. It was an interesting point that they chose to challenge yes. on. And I think um, hopefully when when everything comes to light and all the facts are presented, that uh, yeah. that everything will be July 9th, soon. I think, is the date, right? Okay, is that, yeah. I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so we'll, so again. It's my birthday. So. Uh, well, happy yeah, yeah, happy yeah. early birthday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in Rome, so. Anything else you want to add? Um, I don't think so. Like I said, just it was it was great to see the networking innovation. It was great to see the excitement in the the, the networking keynote today, uh, given a lot more weight. So I'm looking forward to seeing how networking plays a larger role in the modern IT infrastructures moving forward. And certainly this this fall, looking forward to seeing how all this agentic AI technology happens. Well, certainly there was a sub theme to this season's uh, analyst events. If you want to call AI the primary theme, yeah. it was the network is going to have to play a critical role. And it's um, it, it, that hasn't been realized yet in the capital markets, right? I mean, Arista's has gotten a pretty good stock pop. Well, but, but Cisco's most, is just happening. And know, a lot of those pops are happening because they're tied to AI. Right. Right, the back-end AI yeah. environment that Arista plays yeah. so heavily in and Cisco plays in and so forth. So I think it's going to be an interesting realization when they understand that it's not just about those back-end training environments, but the inferencing at the edge at and the collecting edge, yeah. data from the edge. I mean, we could see a massive refresh at the edge, right? So. Correct, everyone everyone trying to upgrade yeah. as you do more inferencing there, and then all the data that has to traverse the network. And so we've seen even companies like Verizon and others and Google coming out with larger WAN pipes specifically dedicated yeah. for AI traffic and so forth. So there's going to be, uh, I think, a big shift in organizations recognizing the value and the importance of the network and making sure that you're going to be able to sustain all your mission critical apps as well as all that AI workload traffic. Yeah. All right, well, AI has given birth to the network era. There you go. Is that your POV? <laughs> that sounds good to me. <laughs> all right. All right, so on behalf of Bob LaLiberté, I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, uh, saying thanks for watching. Absolutely, and I'm here from theCUBE Research, and again, thank you all for watching. So uh, give us a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time in my next episode of ZCast.